I'm James Taylor, back with part two of modeling this gun in Maya. This time we're going to focus on starting to add detail, and I'm going to start real easy with the trigger here. I'll begin with a cube, and I'll just connect across the center to add some subdivisions. I'll extrude to inset some faces, and I'm going to get rid of most of those faces. I really only want the uh, outside shape for the trigger. Now, I'm going to start using bevel a lot here, and bevel is going to show up more and more often as we add detail to our object. For example, I'm gonna connect across here and then I'll bevel to split those into two edges so that I can extrude out, connect across, and now I can create that loop without doing a, a lot of extra uh, additions to create the extrusions. So this is really all we need for the side view. I'm gonna go into perspective and extrude out to create some depth to this shape. And now I'm gonna grab all the outside edges and bevel them. and Bevel creates the sharp edges that are so characteristic of high-res surfaces. I'll just delete out the back really quickly. And when I smooth, even though I have my beveled edges creased, I'll see that it doesn't give me the shape that I want. I have to remember that I might have to crease in more than one direction to get the shape that I need. And now I'm going to apply a mesh smooth to just add some subdivisions. I'll see that the edges there are not smooth, however. In the channel box for the smooth node, I need to turn off keep selection border and keep border edges. And we'll see that that fixes the problem. Now it's smoothed around the edges. And we wanna remember this because this is gonna pop up again and again when we smooth things. So I'll just raise my subdivision level up to two, and now I'm getting rid of the edges that I don't need. So we did this earlier when we smoothed, but I'm just going over it again. The edges that I'm deleting aren't adding anything to the shape of my object. They're not changing the silhouette. They're not adding any curvature. So I'm just selecting them and then deleting them. And then as a last touch, I'll grab the beveled edges, and I'm just gonna use my hardened edge on the edges of those, and that will create a nice sharp border. Okay, now we're gonna do a rivet, another good example of uh, easy high detail. I'll start with a cylinder and I'm just gonna cut in a lot of subdivisions on the cap using my connect tool with edges selected. And with all these different subdivisions in there, I'll just start extruding them back and extruding them around to create the shape that I need. So basically we're creating a lot of insets and then I can select the edges of each of those and bevel them to create some sharp edges and then go in and harden those edges again to give me a nice mechanical shape. Now I'm gonna do something a little bit more complicated, which is the pad at the end of this stock. And I'll start by selecting the cap of the cylinders that I already have there. I'll use duplicate face to separate it from the original and just push it out a little bit. Then I'll go to face mode and delete the bottom half. I'll duplicate the object and spin it around. And then I'm gonna combine them together with each other and just basically bridge across the center. And then I'll just extrude the whole shape to start to create the depth of the object. I do want to remember to get rid of the faces on the inside that are left when I extrude. And then I'll do another extrusion. If we look at the reference, we'll see that it tapers on both ends. So I want to have a row for each one of those tapers. After that, I'll add a few horizontal rows using the connect tool or the insert edge loop tool, just so that I can control the shape to create a little bit of that curvature. And now I'm just reshaping my object to match the reference a little bit better. Here I'm using the soft modification tool, the soft selection tool to move my verts into position. And I'll see that when I use my smooth proxy by hitting the three key, I get a shape that does agree pretty well with my reference. So I'll grab the edge ring around the end here and I'll use my bevel tool. And I can always adjust the bevel after the fact in the channel box. And I wanna remember that because it's a lot easier than setting it ahead of time. Okay, so let's start to do something a little bit more interesting. I'll, I'll do a few more bevels, I'll add some creases, and then I'm gonna smooth my object and make it fairly high res. I'm gonna use quite a few subdivisions because I wanna create these grooves on the end of the object next. And I'll start by building a cube and just intersecting it with my object. I'll make sure it extends beyond the extents of the object and I'll bevel the edges. I want to get as final a shape as I can. And then I'll start duplicating it to just create about the right number, and then I'll combine them. Next, we're going to use an animation tool. So change your drop down in the top left to animation and go to create deformers. With the object selected, let's create a bend deformer. And then over in our channel box, we can edit the angle of the bend so that we get something that kind of matches the reference. We're going to use this as a Boolean 
And Boolean works best with solid objects. So I'll duplicate the stock across the axis, I'll combine it together and I'll merge the verts, and now I'm ready to Boolean. So I'll select the stock first and the boxes second, and then I'll use a Boolean difference to subtract the boxes from the stock. The order that we select them in is important, so remember that. Okay, I'm gonna go to the other end of the gun, to the barrel, and do something interesting. I'm gonna select the faces on the barrel, and I wanna create a ridged effect. So under the Edit Mesh menu, I can turn off Keep Faces Together, and when I extrude, I'll see that all the faces are extruded separately. I can scale them independently. This will give me a nice ridged effect. Now, in Maya 2015, Keep Faces Together is not in the Edit Mesh menu. It's going to be in your channel box under the Extrude. So just keep that in mind. It's in different places once you move to Maya 2015. Okay, back to the body. I'm going to grab the bottom faces of the body and use my Extract to break those faces apart. And then I'm going to grab the edges along that seam and just move them manually to create that gap between the top and the bottom part of the body. This is an important feature of the gun, so I'm just gonna handle this manually to get the shapes that I need. I know this shape will be important later, so I wanna focus on getting it right now before I start smoothing or subdividing. All right, let's do these grooves on the side of the body. I start with a cylinder, and I'll use just the cap, I'll extrude down. This is pretty much the same thing we did on the stock. So I'll move and scale this thing into place, but we'll see that when I scale it narrower, the cap becomes distorted. So here's a trick. I'll select some verts and then I hold down the D key and I can change the pivot point of that selection and then I can scale it to fit. Now I'll extrude the outer ring of edges and I'm doing this instead of extruding the face. You'll see that the one edge has been extruded improperly. If I go into my move tool settings and I'll set my move axis to normals average and then I can push that edge into place, it'll move normally. So the next thing I'll do is I'll extrude outside to create a little bit of a border, and I can duplicate that object to create that arch that's on the lower portion. I'll just rescale it a little bit so that it fits. Now I need to integrate these objects into the side of my gun. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that border that I created to kind of fit these together. So I'll push those points out, I'll use them to basically spread out around the object, to create the flat surface that is gonna be around these, basically the side of the gun's body. I'll use my scale tool on that outer ring of edges to just ensure that it's flattened. I'll combine those two objects together. I'll start merging the verts together and then I'll optimize the edge flow a little bit just to make it easier to deal with. I'll use my split polygon or my multi-cut tool to just cut faces around those shapes and delete those from the main body. So I'm creating the hole that those pieces will fit into. Then I can combine those two shapes together. And now I just have to start to merge verts and connect the two pieces together. So I can use my bridge tool to connect edges. I can use my merge verts tool to just snap verts together. I can extrude from some of these edges and just then merge the verts together. So it'll vary based on what part of the object we're looking at, but we're just trying to close up all of these holes so that we have a nice solid mesh. You'll see that I'm spreading all these verts around. I'm not just connecting things to corners. This is because I want to avoid having any triangles that are just way too sharp. So this video has focused on mid-level detailing. With the next video, we're going to step up another level and start to add very fine resolution detail. All right, I'm James Taylor. Thanks for watching.